and what God has given us in, in the book of Proverbs, and we're going to talk about how that we can apply God's wisdom in every area of our life, whether it's our relationships, whether it's our finances, whether it's our walk with God spiritually, whether it's our, just our daily, our, our daily activities, our daily choices, how the Word of God and the wisdom of God can improve on our life. Now, we understand that the book of Proverbs was written by who? Solomon. Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. Solomon was considered to be the wisest man that ever lived. As a matter of fact, put 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 30 up here. Look, look at what the Bible says about Solomon's wisdom. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Ezraite, and Heman, the, and, and Shahol, and Darda and Mao and his fame was in all the nations round about. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of cedar trees from the cedar, or spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, Lebanon even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, of fowl, creeping things, and of fishes. And there came of all the people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Solomon's wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding of things was so renowned that everyone, even the kings, would come just to hear what Solomon had to say. Considered the wisest man that, that ever lived. And Solomon compiled this collection of proverbs, this collection of wisdom. I'm sure it took him years to accumulate uh, all of the things that he wrote, but much of it is preserved in the book of Proverbs, in the Bible. And you'll notice that throughout the Proverbs, now let me point this out because this is very interesting and it's important to understand at the very beginning, the opposite of wisdom is not ignorance. The opposite of wisdom is not ignorance. Now, the opposite of knowledge may be ignorance, but the opposite of wisdom is not ignorance. What you're going to see throughout the book of Proverbs is that wisdom, and the opposite of wisdom, is foolishness. The opposite of wisdom is wickedness. And you're going to find throughout the book of Proverbs uh, the contrast between the wise and the foolish. Now, does that carry any, any recollection of anything Jesus talked about in the New Testament? The wise and the foolish? What do, you, what do you recall? The house on the sand and the house on the rock? How about the wise virgins and the foolish virgins? And so even into the New Testament, Solomon's wisdom and Jesus, Jesus' teaching compared wisdom, not to ignorance, but to foolishness and to wickedness. And we're reminded time and time again in the pages that in our life, if we're going to be successful, if we're going to have a good life, if we're going to have a godly life, then we've got to follow the path of wisdom and not the path of folly or foolishness. And, and I suppose you could say that the book of Proverbs is the book of two paths. The book of two paths. The question is, which path do you take? Do you choose the path of wisdom? 
or do you choose the path of wickedness and folly? And we are constantly, we are constantly, every day we face choices. Every single day. We have choices that we have to make. And those choices are either to live God's way or to live our way. You've got choice. Everybody has that right. God gives you the will to choose. And you have the ability to choose, do I choose to live God's way, which would be the way of wisdom, or do I choose to use my, live my own way, which would be the way of foolishness and folly? You either sow to the Spirit or you sow to the flesh. You do this every day. You make choices every day that, that will determine whether you sow to the Spirit or you sow to the flesh. Whether you choose wisdom or whether you choose folly. And the person who, who consistently, the person who, who over and over again chooses and acts upon biblical truth is the person who will be able to navigate their way through the difficulties of life, who will be able to navigate their way through the, through the, uh, the things that, that come our way and the, the, the craziness that our society now is, is, is in and, and the, the wickedness that our, that our world is in. If you choose to follow the, pay, the way of biblical truth or the way of wisdom, then you'll be able to navigate your way through all of that. You'll be, a, you, you'll be able to make your way through it. As a matter of fact, a person who, who chooses the way of wisdom will face a whole lot less difficulties simply because of making their own wise choices. You ever heard it said about somebody, they are their own worst enemy? You know what that is? It's because of the choices they make. It's because that they choose to make choices that eventually, some of them sooner than others, but eventually come back to bite them. They set themselves up for their own defeat because of the choices they make. They set themselves up for, for their own misery. You ever said something I said about somebody, they don't have sense come in out of the rain? Some people, they, that's, that's, they, they have a lifestyle of making destructive choices. I, I've read several books simply because of some of the counseling I've had to do uh, in the past. I've read some books about, about relationships and how there are some people who constantly, it doesn't matter who they're with, they're constantly choosing someone that is going to take them the wrong way. They gravitate toward people. They, they literally gravitate toward people. Not that, will, not that will lift them up, but they gravitate toward people that pull them down. Gravitate toward people that, that will, will got, take them in, in the wrong direction. And so, to, through choices that they make. And Solomon, Solomon wanting to save, and I believe Solomon probably wrote this book a whole lot for his son because you'll see several references in the book where he says, my son, my son. And he wanted to impart wisdom to his son. Maybe he didn't want him to make the same mistakes he had made. Maybe he wanted to, to help his son understand that there's a better way of living than what a lot of other people choose. And so he, he wanted to impart that. But one thing he, he included in the book of Solomon is something we also find in the book of John. And, and the book of John, St. John, is one of the few biblical books, like the book of Proverbs, that spells out why it was written. 
It's one of the few biblical books that openly tell us why, why it was written. And in Proverbs chapter 1, in Proverbs the first chapter, Solomon is stating the purpose of the book. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 2. The Bible says this, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Now you're going to find that the word wisdom, the word instruction, the word understanding are going to show up a whole lot together because they work together. You want to have understanding, you've got to have wisdom. To have wisdom, you've got to receive instruction. So you're going to find that all of these things, that wisdom, understanding, and instruction work together. They're like a cooperative. They, 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 they're like a wheel, and the, and the gears kind of come together and work together. And, and they, they provide or strengthen one another. He said, this, this is the purpose of the book. I want you to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Verse 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom. What did I just say? To have wisdom, you have to receive instruction. You ever, you ever uh, been around somebody that doesn't matter how you try to help them, they can't hear you? They cannot receive instruction. Sometimes it comes in the form of a, uh, of a rebuke, or sometimes it comes in, a for, uh, uh, in the form of just some advice, but it just seems like they cannot receive it. You cannot have wisdom if you cannot receive instruction. If you cannot be teachable. Everybody say, I need to be teachable. You've got to be able to receive wisdom in your life. You have to be teachable. So to receive, verse 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Verse 4, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Probably if I was going to choose a book and say, say this is a manual out of the Bible, this is a manual for living, I, I would point to the book of Proverbs. Several years ago there was a uh, book written, I, I, I think the title of it was, and I, I didn't buy it, I just saw it and kind of glanced at it and, and leafed through the pages, but I didn't buy it. Uh, the Big Little Instruction Book. And it just went one, number one, two, three, four, and, and did all kinds of little proverbs or sayings, and it just went one thing after the other, and it was the advice of this guy to, uh, to people on, on how to live, much like the book of Proverbs. And it was way down, if I remember correctly, it was way down like one in the 150s, 156, 158, something like that, that he finally said, you need to be wise. He got all the way down in the 150s before he, he said you have to be. To, to me, wisdom has to be the principal thing. Wisdom has to be the thing that, that, you, that you start with. And Solomon's purpose of writing the book was to teach, especially the young, because he, he said, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. He, he especially wanted young men to understand those that had, had not experienced life, those that were just learning the ropes. He was wanting to give them a grasp on life. He was wanting to give them a grasp of instruction, and more than likely, like I said earlier, it was for his son. As he referred to my son several times through the book, he wanted his son to understand wisdom. Because if you can have wisdom, you can distinguish between good advice and bad advice. If you had wisdom, you can distinguish between a good decision and a bad decision. And every decision has those two options. 
a good decision and a bad decision. And you can actually trace the origins of this book back to 1 Kings chapter 3. So let's put that up there, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 29, or 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. The Bible says, In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. Now Solomon, uh, it had just said, I think in verse 3 of chapter 3, Sol- the Bible says that Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon had went to Gibeon to offer sacrifice, to worship, to worship the Lord. And it was at this place of worship that the Lord spoke to him. And in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give unto thee. Now, if God appeared to you in a dream, and God said, just ask me what you want. Tell me what you want. And I'll give it to you. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? <laughs> mm-hmm. But that's what he was doing. He spoke to Solomon. He said, Just ask me. Ask me what you want. Verse 6. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness <coughs> and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king Instead of David, my father, David had just passed. His dad had just died. And he said, and I am but a child. I know not how to go out or come in. He had a little bit of wisdom to start with, didn't he? He he understood his limitations. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people, that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore, here is his request, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Help me to make the right decisions. Help me to choose what's good and bad. Sometimes people come to me and they ask me things, and I need some advice on this. My first question most of the time is, have you prayed about it? Have you asked God about it? Have you asked God what's the good decision, what's the bad decision? Have you prayed about it? This is what... The Bible says of Solomon's request. And the speech pleased the Lord. I wonder if there's times that we seek things from God that doesn't please God. And it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Verse 11. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Even God recognized there's some things he could have asked for, but he didn't. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a, a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways, keep my statutes, my commandments, as thy father David did walk, 
Then I will lengthen thy days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. So the book of Proverbs can be traced back to one prayer. To Solomon asking God, give me an understanding heart that I may judge the people. And because what he did pleased God, what he did, when he, had, when he asked for wisdom, when he prayed for wisdom, it pleased the Lord. And God said, because you have done that, then I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. I'm going to bless you with things that you did not even desire. Let me tell you something. If you serve God and you put God first, God will take care of the rest. Jesus said it when he said, seek first the kingdom. And then all of these things shall be added unto you. If you seek to please God, God will take care of everything else. You won't have to worry about everything else. God will take care of everything else. God will provide everything else. But you put God first. Seek the kingdom of God first. You desire whatever God desires. Pray and say, God, whatever, whatever you want first in my life, I want to put you first. I want to put you ahead of everything else. And because Solomon did that, because Solomon did that, God blessed him beyond description. The wealth of Solomon, the wisdom of Solomon, put 1 Kings 4.29 up there. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore. Verse 30. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Out of one prayer well, I could preach on the power of one prayer. Have coming to God and believing one prayer. But our focus is on the book of Proverbs, so I've got to stay focused. Let, let, let me just give you some pastoral notes right here. Let, let me just throw in some pastoring to, to help you out a little bit and understand the, the importance of wisdom. That if you have wisdom... If you have wisdom, you'll not only be able to make money, you'll be able to keep your money. Somebody said one time, if he's got a nickel, it's going to burn a hole in his pocket. <laughs> Some people think they got a dollar in the pocket, they got to spend it. Wisdom gives you the understanding of what you can do so that not only are you going to be able to be successful financially, but you're going to be able to keep your money. You're not going to spend everything that everything once you get it. Okay, if you have wisdom, you'll be able to develop good, lasting friendships and relationships. If you have wisdom, you'll know what to say and when to say it. Well, that's important right there. You ever heard people say, oh, I just speak my mind. You know what that tells me? You can't control your tongue. That's what that tells me right there. You can't control your tongue. I just speak my mind. There is a time to say it. Wisdom gives you the understanding that some things are better left unsaid. And other things are said at the appropriate time. If you have wisdom, you'll know how to avoid a whole lot of misery in life just by the decisions you make. Because a lot of misery is, like I said earlier, people just bring on themselves. They just, they just bring a whole lot of trouble in their own life just by their own choices. Sometimes just by who they surround themselves with. We're going to teach a, a lesson on that out of the book of Proverbs later on down the road. 
about the relationships that you build in life. If you have wisdom, you'll be able to sleep at night because you won't be dreading the consequences of your actions. And one of the things you're going to learn out of, out of the book of Proverbs, every action has a consequence. You're going to learn that out of the book of Proverbs. Every action, every choice comes with a consequence. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, but it comes with a consequence. Every single one. So how do we define wisdom? Webster defines it this way. Webster says, accumulated philosophic or scientific learning, knowledge, insight, good sense, judgment. Now, I like to give it a working definition. So to me, wisdom is the, simply the ability to make good choices. It's the ability to make good choices. Now, you're going to find that the word, the Hebrew word in the Old Testament, appears 141 times in the Old Testament, mostly in the book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes and in the book of Job. Mostly in those three books. And 141 times in the Old Testament. In the Hebrew, it is the knowledge and the ability to make the right choice at the right time. I've always thought that a sign of maturity, whether spiritual maturity or, or emotional maturity, is the, is the consistent, is the consistent uh, choosing or making the right choice. Consistently making the right choice is a sign of maturity. It's a sign that, that a person is emotionally mature. It's a sign that somebody is spiritually mature in their spiritual decisions. And, and let me tell you, too many people, you know how they make their decisions? They make their decisions based on emotion. They get in... You ever seen people make decisions when they're angry? Worst time to make a decision. Worst time. You're going to regret it, and you may even have to apologize for it. But it's the worst time. And the majority of people make their decisions based on emotion, based on feelings. How they feel is the influence of making their decision. One day a man was flying his plane and he noticed that there was a small cloud ahead. And he thought, well, it's a small cloud, I'll just fly into it. And he did. What he didn't realize is it wasn't a small cloud. It looked like a small cloud from his vantage point but it turned out to be a very large cloud. And so he decided to try to get out of the cloud. So he thought, well, if I bring the, the nose of the plane up, I can fly up out of the cloud. So that's what he did. He brought the plane up and started flying upward to bring the plane out of the cloud. And the farther he went up, still cloud. So he thought, well, if I go down, I'll come out of the cloud. So he pushed his, he pushed his, his uh, instruments forward, and the plane began, the nose began to go down, and so the plane went down, headed down, hopefully out of the cloud. He kept going. He wasn't coming out of the cloud. And then he began to get disoriented. And he didn't realize, he, his feelings told him, you're upside down. Your plane is upside down. He had lost total sense of guidance on his plane. Because he didn't have any reference point on the horizon to be able to judge what his plane was doing. And so he looked at the instruments 
And the instruments told him he was flying level. But his emotion and his feeling told him, you're upside down. And so he had to choose, do I trust the instruments or do I trust my feelings? And he had to fight with everything within him to trust the instruments. Because his feeling was so overwhelming, he had become so disoriented in the cloud that he, he, he wasn't thinking right, and so he had to choose, do I trust what I feel, or are my instruments messed up, are my instruments lying to me? What do I do? You ever been in a trial, and, and you get in that trial, and, and you get disoriented spiritually? You get disoriented emotionally in the middle of the trial and you're trying to trust God and you're trying to know, know what the instruments tell you but you're, you're just not feeling it. It's just not really coming to you. Well, that's the way this man felt in the plane and he, he just kept flying. He said, I choose to trust the instruments. My, my feelings tell me one thing. Now let me ask you, how many of you in the middle of a, in the middle of a, uh, of a trial, of a cloud in your life, how many of you trust your feelings over your faith? How many of you trust your, your emotions and what you're feeling at that moment over what you know the Word of God says? As the story goes, the man finally flew out of the cloud. And he, as soon as he flew out of the cloud, he realized that it was a low cloud and how close he was to the ground. But the plane was right side up. It wasn't upside down. Had he trusted his feelings, he would have crashed the plane. Had he trusted his emotions, it would have cost him his life. But he choose or chose to trust the instruments. It took everything within him to trust the instruments. To trust what he knew they were telling him. Folks, let me tell you something. You never go wrong trusting this right here. Never. You never go wrong trusting this. Your feelings will put you in situations that, that will absolutely destroy you. Your feelings will destroy relationships. Your feelings will destroy uh, 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 things, your ministries. Your feeling will destroy your ministry. Your feeling will destroy a whole lot of things in your life if you just go by your feelings. That's why we need wisdom. Wisdom to choose. Wisdom to make decisions. Wisdom to know what's the best. Do we trust the instruments or do we go with what we feel? And Solomon in his book is going to give us some instruction. He's going to give us some proverbs to live by that will help us make the right choices. Make the right decisions. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. According to Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7, the prerequisite to wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the what? I'll say it again. That's right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. We live in a foolish generation. We don't want anybody telling us what to do. We live in a foolish generation. We live in a generation that wants preachers just to make us feel good. 
Folks, I want a preacher that's going to keep me out of hell. And sometimes it's not about feeling good. Sometimes it's about living right. We live in a foolish generation. That preacher is not going to tell me what to do. I've had people tell me that. And ultimately, it's not me, it's not me telling you what to do anyway. It's just the Word. I can just preach the Word. Bible, that's what the Bible tells me. The Bible tells me to preach the Word. The Bible doesn't tell me to preach my opinions. It doesn't tell me to preach my feelings. It doesn't tell me to preach my frustrations. It tells me to preach the Word. It's the word. But the foolish generation that we live in doesn't want the word. In the Old Testament, when the, Phil when the Philistines had taken the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, and I talked about this, I think, a few Wednesday nights ago before vacation, they took the Ark of the Covenant, and there were three items in the Ark. Anybody tell me what they were? The three items? Manna. Aaron's rod, staff, and what? Tablets. Tables of stone, the law. And so they took it. And of course, it ended up being a curse to them because it represented the presence of God. They didn't honor it as the presence of God. And so it became a curse to them. And every time they would put it in their temple beside their God, their God fell down. Would you want to serve a God that keeps falling down? And so they sent the Ark of the Covenant back. Well, when the Ark of the Covenant come back, it only had one thing in it. They kept, they kept the rod, Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod represented the authority of God. They kept the pot of manna. That represented God's provision. But they didn't keep the law. They didn't keep, and that's what this generation wants. They want the blessing. They want the pot of manna. They want the authority of the power of God, but they don't want the word. They don't want the instruction. And the fear of the, the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The best decision you can ever make is to make Jesus Christ number one in your life. Put him first above all things. You, your path to wisdom begins with putting God first. Your path to wisdom begins with saying, God, no matter what comes, I, I choose you first. You are my priority. I'm going to be faithful to you. I am committed to you. There's nothing in my life, God, that is more important than my relationship with you. Nothing. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now that word fear doesn't mean a trembling fear. But an awe and a respect of God. Being in awe of God and respecting him. And if you've never really put your faith and your trust in God, you need to do that today. If you have never, if you, have, if you don't have God first in your life, what's the first step to doing that? Put up Hebrews 11.6. What's the first step to doing that? The Bible says in Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 6th verse, but without, what? Without faith. It's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, diligently seek him. When we come to God, when we start seeking God, and putting God first, it starts with a simple faith in that God is and that God will reward those that seek him. And that takes us to what will our response be of the gospel. 
Our response is our repentance when we come to God and repent of our sins. Say, God, I'm sorry for my sin. Every sin I've committed, I'm sorry. And repentance isn't just saying I'm sorry today and going back tomorrow and doing the same thing over. Repentance is a change of life. It's a change of lifestyle. It's turning around. It's, 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 it's saying, God, I was walking this way, but now I'm going to walk this way. It's an about face in your life, so it's repentance. And then being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's when your sins are washed away. And then he said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now let me tell you this, something else about wisdom, because I've got to finish, I've got to quit. And, and we're, this is going to be our series over the next few weeks. We're going to be talking about the book of Proverbs. You cannot choose the wisdom of God in one part of the Bible and ignore the wisdom of God in another part of the Bible. You can't pick and choose. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. You can't choose to say, oh, I'll, I'll obey God in this part, but that part I don't think is important. You have to obey God completely. If you want to have peace with God, you have to obey God completely. All right, I got to finish. I want to close with this verse. Put Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 up. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. The Bible says, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse or business. In the openings of the gates or the places of authority. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Verse 23. This is the invitation. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will Pour out my spirit unto you. This is wisdom saying, I will give you. I will make known my words unto you. If you desire wisdom, God will give you wisdom. Matter of fact, James said, if you ask, God will give it liberally. If you ask for wisdom, God will give it liberally. God wants us to be wise. He wants us to be the wise that build our house on the rock. Because it's the foolish that builds their house on the sand. He wants us to be wise. We're going to be talking about this over the next several weeks. Stand with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that you have invited us. You have chosen us, God. And that, Lord, you've chosen, God, to impart to us wisdom. I pray, Lord, God, let wisdom come forth in our hearts and our lives. Help us, God. Give us understanding and knowledge of the things of your word and the promises of your word. And I pray, Almighty God, that, Lord, through wisdom, we're able to make the right decisions. And through wisdom, we're able, God, to choose wisely. I pray it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for being in Sunday school. God bless you, church, in a few minutes.